Hey, what's up? In Oklahoma, they put onions on their hamburgers, man. Like so many onions. At first, I was a little bit skeptical, but once I tried it for myself, I was both shocked and totally stoked at how good it actually was. Holy mm. Now, an Oklahoma burger might be like my favorite of all time. It's crazy to say, but it rips pretty freaking hard. Today, I'm gonna show you how to make one. To get started, I'm gonna need some beef. Specifically, I've got two pounds or just about a kilo of boneless beef short rib here. Yes, I am gonna be making my own ground beef for this burger, but you certainly don't have to. I chose to use boneless short rib because it has a high intramuscular fat content that's naturally about 80-20 and it has deep beef flavor, but a fatty chuck roast would also work and would probably be a little bit cheaper. To get these ready to grind, I'm gonna cut them into slightly smaller pieces so that they break down easier in my homespun meat grinder. I'm saying that with air quotes because it's actually a food processor. More on that in a second. Once the beef is diced into roughly inch and a half chunks like this, I'm going to move it to the freezer to firm it up for about 15 minutes. 15 minutes later, I've got some nice firm beef. Firm beef is a lot easier on the chopper blade and it's a lot less likely to gunk it up. Now I'm going to grind this meat in two batches. The best way I found to do that evenly is to pulse the meat. I think pulsing is a lot easier on the motor as well. I usually go for somewhere in the ballpark of 30 to 42 second pulses. After about a minute of pulsing, it's time to take a look. Right away, you can see the meat and fat are very evenly broken down and texturally it's much looser than store-bought ground beef. The reason being is that store-bought beef has been roughhoused a lot more than the home ground stuff, and as a result, there's more myosin present. That's the protein that makes meat sticky. Chopping our beef gently like we did leaves the proteins less bound together and thus makes them looser and easier to chew, also known as tender. Once I've got both batches of meat spun up, I'll grab my gram scale and then measure out two and a half ounces of beef, about 70 grams. Two pounds of ground beef here should yield about 12 patties in total. Now, this meat is a little too loose to hold itself together as a nice patty, so I'm gonna work it just a tiny little bit to release a little bit of that myosin so that the meat gets like 10% more sticky. Now, I'll set this beef up on some parchment paper and then I'll cover it with another small piece. Next, I'll grab something flat, which in this case happens to be my bread lid slash pizza pan, and then I'll give the ball of meat a nice firm smash. I'll give it a few more pushes and that should get this ball spread out into about five to six inches across. From there, I'm gonna use my hands to press out the perimeter of the patty so that it gets tapered and flat. In a hot pan, that part will fry up into super crispy lacy edges that are unbelievably delicious. If you're wondering, hey Bri, why are you pre-smashing these? Isn't that something that you do in the pan? Well, I always pre-smash them because to do this properly in the pan, you need a very specific, very heavy duty wide spatula that I don't have. The only spatula I've got is this bent holy metal one. More on why it's bent in just a second, but as you can see, this spatula does not get this burger patty nearly thin enough to be called a smash burger, and the meat gets all gunked up in the holes. Once I got 12 of these patties smashed thin like this, I'm gonna move them over to the fridge for just a second to keep cool while I get the onion part of this burger sorted out. For that, I've got four of the smallest white onions that I could pick out of the sack, and I've pre-peeled them and cut off the north and south poles. I'm using white onions because red and yellow have too much sugar and burn in the pan super quick. Now, I'll grab my mandolin and start to shave these very thin. And when I say thin, I mean very, very thin, like just thicker than a sheet of printer paper. We need these onions to soften and caramelize in the same amount of time it takes for two and a half ounces of beef to get seared. If you don't have a mandolin, you could do this by hand, it just might take a little bit of practice. In total, four small white onions should be more than enough to cover 12 burger patties, and once they're all cut up, I'm gonna move them over to a bowl and then grab my burger cooking vessel, which in this case is my 14-inch nonstick pan. While that preheats over medium-high heat, I'll quickly thank the sponsor of this video, Geology. Reluctantly, because I have acne-prone skin, I've tried literally hundreds of skincare products. The realization I've come to after trying all of them is that most of them are just inert, fancy lotion with no real useful ingredients inside. That's where Geology comes in. They provide a simple but effective skincare routine for people who just want something that works. The way it works is simple too. You take their 30 second quiz online about your skin and then they match you with a personalized regimen. Mine was number 17. That includes two face washes. That's one for the sink and one for the shower. It also includes the morning cream, the night cream, and their award-winning eye cream, which Lauren actually really loves and uses way more than I do. The Geology products focus on a short list of scientifically proven ingredients that dermatologists 
dermatologists recommend. I'm talking retinol, niacinamide, and kojic acid. None of the nonsense stuff. What you get here is simple ingredients that help you fight acne, reduce oiliness, and overall take care of your skin. So to give Geology a try, click the link in my description or go to geology.com and take their free skincare quiz to save up to 50% off your 30-day trial. That's G-E-O-L-O-G-I-E.com. Thank you, Geology. I'm using this large pan so that I can cook four burger patties at once. If you don't have a pan this size, I get it. I'll link to this one in the description because I use it for like 90% of my cooking. But a 12 inch cast iron pan, if you've got one of those, would also work really well. The only downside is that you can only cook two patties at a time. Now, these burgers are gonna cook super fast, so I really need to make sure that I've got everything ready to go before we start cooking them. I've got my bowl of very thinly shaved onions here, ready to go. I've got my pile of patties ready to rip. I've also got some salt and pre-ground pepper because fresh cracked is gonna take too long. Of course, I've got my buns at the ready. You'll notice that I pre-toasted these. I just did that in a little oil in a non-stick pan. Since there's no need for this bun to be particularly ripping hot, I do it ahead of time. That way I have a little bit more attention to concentrate on cooking the burgers properly properly because that process happens really fast. Lastly, I've got my burger cheese decellophaned ahead of time. Of course, this is American style cheese product because it's the best burger cheese that exists. Once it's all gooey and melted up, it will glue our burger together and also moisten things up almost like a sauce. Now, over at the stove, my large nonstick pan is preheated and I'll load in four patties. Pre-smashing makes that quick and easy because I just have to peel off the paper and drop them in. No oil required either. These short rib patties will render some of their beef fat and lube up the pan pretty quick. Next, a strong pinch of salt, then a strong pinch of pre-ground black pepper, and next I'll drop about a half cup of shaved onions on the back side of each of these patties. Make sure to break them up a little bit so that some are on the burger and some are in the pan. That's gonna give us a nice spread of deeply caramelized onions in some places and partially steamed tender onions in others. That's the detail we're looking for. Now I'm gonna take my previously mentioned bent spatula and give each patty a 10 second press to make sure as much of the burger is touching the hot pan as possible. This is just a cheap supermarket brand spatula that I bent vertically so that I could more easily provide downward pressure. It doesn't work at all for smashing balls of beef into patties, as you saw earlier, but it's perfect for making sure that patties touch the pan evenly. Once I've given each of these patties a 10 second smush, I'll let them continue to sear for another 30 to 45 seconds on this first side. That's about 90 seconds in total. Now I'll turn the pan to ensure even heating and then I'll check on the onions. As you can see, they're caramelized around the edges and then just starting to soften in the middle. That's perfect. Now at this point, I'm gonna come back to check the sear quality underneath. It's crispy, it's dark and looks amazing. So now I'm gonna flip all four of these patties over and this is where the real magic happens. This burger is gonna be sitting on those onions and it's gonna both steam the beef, giving it a deeply sweet onion flavor, but also the hot pan's gonna caramelize those onions more and make this whole thing taste real dope. I'll give these patties 20 more seconds sitting right on the onions and then I'll drop down my American cheese. Finally, I'll put two bottom buns on two of these cheeseburgers and top those with a top bun. This move is gonna help warm the bun. It's gonna soften a little bit, making it a little bit squishier and it's gonna make them smell like onions all of which are a good thing. After about two to two and a half minutes of cooking in total, it's time to put these burgers together. I'll do that off heat on the counter here because the lighting is a little bit better, but you could certainly do this over at the stove. Top bun's off, then I'll grab the bottom bun patty combination and I'll flip it over. Check out this onion situation on here. They're all caramelized and steamed and soft and they look super delicious. I'll just make sure that they're spread evenly. Then I'll grab another patty and stack it onion to onion on top of the first. Now the cheese is facing up and when I put my soft, lightly toasted brioche bun right on top it stays glued in place and oh my lord look at this nasty little thing it's beefy gooey juicy and just a little bit crispy around the edges oklahoma you guys have it freaking figured out on the burger front shaved roasted onions on a burger are very dope and other than cheese that might be all that you need please make this burger soon i'm begging you guys let's eat this thing Woo!